Okay, so we're in the home stretch of our three part high voltage battery discussion and it's decision time. Do I go B mount? Do I go Helix G mount or V mount? And what's with this seven cell 26 volt thing? Let's park any more B mount talk for now because I covered it all on part two. And if you missed that, just check it out on YouTube. So first, let's quickly tackle these seven cell 26 volt packs and why they shouldn't even be part of the discussion for the Alexa 35. As you can see, Alexa 35's operating range is between 20.5 volts and 33.6 volts. Well, Helix or B-mount packs operating range are between 22 and 33.6 volts. It's probably why Aria made sure you had the best possible experience with B-mount, right? Just to be clear, Helix and B-mount share the same voltage operating range, which is in the sweet spot of the Alexa 35. So whether you choose Helix V-mount, G-mount, or B-mount, they're all the same. Now, these 26 volt players, you're not quite cutting the mustard. 26 volt packs, or 25.9 to be precise, have an operating range of 17.5 to 28.9 volts, as you can see here. Back to the graph. When the camera shuts down at 20.5 volts, the 26 volt packs aren't fully discharged yet. What that means is that the packs may show up to 20% remaining yet the camera will shut off suddenly. No bueno. Now we've been hearing some incorrect information out there about the Helix Max, so let me clarify. The Helix V, G, and B mount packs are native dual voltage. What this means is that the Helix packs are native 14.4 volts, which when connected to a Helix plate, switch to native 28.8 volts, which are eight cell packs. Remember, the key is that they're native 14.4 volts, and then they're native 28.8 volts. That means no power loss and no issues with regulation or heat. They connect to the appropriate mount plate and then switch to the higher voltage. Not to bore you with the details on how that's done, it's simply a pack that switches from parallel cellular arrangement to a series arrangement. The beauty of this is that when it's not connected to a helix plate, it'll charge in all your standard charging equipment. That's right, you don't need any new chargers. The other benefit is, is that they're native 14.4 volt packs. So you can power a low voltage camera, monitors, Teradek, lights, and more. Now these statements may seem biased, so feel free to do your own due diligence and ring up those 26 volt providers and see if they can review what we're saying. We're referencing their own specs. We're all about transparency here. Keep in mind too, you're gonna need a special 26 volt charger for those packs, so ask them about that as well. So, to recap the past three episodes on high voltage, when it comes to chargers, Helix V and G mount, no new chargers. With the B mount, you'll need a new charger obviously to support the unique mechanism of the B mount. But with 26 volts, new charger. When it comes to powering other equipment besides the Alexa 35, Helix V and G mount work on all standard low voltage cameras and accessories. With B mount, you'll need to adapt the plates. With 26 volts, you'll need to adapt the plates and you need regulation. Which leads to inefficiency and heat. And lastly, when it comes to powering the Alexa 35, Helix V, G, and B mount, dual voltage powerhouses. 26 volts, eh, not so much. It's like the 26 volt pack showed up to the party that was already three fourths of the way over, if you get my drift. Well, that'll do it for our high voltage videos with Core. I hope you enjoyed them and they were informative and most of all helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Until then, stay Core driven.